Recently I bought a GPS disciplined oscillator. What this is, you can uh, try to get a crystal to uh, have an accurate 10 megahertz reference through a variety of methods, one of which is to put it in a temperature controlled environment and carefully control its properties and so on. But no matter what you do, you're never going to wind up with uh, accuracy out of a crystal like you get out of a rubidium or uh, other atomic frequency standard, which are very expensive. So, what some enterprising people have done, and I think this BG7 TBL that you see on the front here is one of those people, is figure out how to use a GPS receiver to lock a crystal to as close a frequency uh, as you can get to, to exactly 10 megahertz. What this does, on the right over here you see is an RF uh, input which is, goes to a GPS antenna. And as long as that antenna can see enough of the sky to pick up a constellation of satellites, this uh, unit can take the signals from those satellites and convert it into an averaged 10 megahertz signal that is very, very precise in frequency. <clears throat> now, what you see on the left here, at the bottom is a blinking run light. That is in sequence with an output here called one pulse per second that you can use, for example, to run a, uh, a clock or something of that sort. Uh, and, and that will lock it very, very closely to the uh, National Institute of uh, Technology. The second one up is the GPS lock signal. This, when it turns green, it means that the uh, GPS has enough satellites in its constellation to, to do an accurate frequency uh, setting. And then above that, you can't see it now, is a red light that uh, is not lit. You might be able to see it in the video, but it's not turned on. And when that is turned on, that means that it's called alarm, and it just means that the, uh, that the temperature oven in this unit has not yet reached operating temperature. <clears throat> so, as I say, what happens is the GPS signal comes in here is then used to lock to a series of uh, satellites and that is then output on this uh, output as a very precise 10 megahertz signal. What I have done is taken that and run it through an amplifier and brought it out on that distribution block. Now, right now, I have the, uh, the signal going over to, now let me back off a little bit here so that you can see a little better, to a DSA-815, which is over there. Let me turn off this light. You can maybe see it better. Mm -hmm. And I'm using this disciplined oscillator to lock the reference of this DSA-815 to a more precise 10 megahertz. And here is the uh, disciplined oscillator connected as uh, the reference in to this uh, Regal DSA-815. The, uh, I also plan to use it for my uh, DS4000 oscilloscope, which, is, uh, which has an external reference input as well. But I thought I would show you this. Let me, uh, let me tilt up just a little bit here and zoom in. And you can see where uh, up here it says external reference. Now what I'm going to do is temporarily disconnect it 
there you see it goes away and then when I reconnect it it comes back and what that tells me is that the uh, DSA815 is now locked to a far more accurate frequency uh, reference than its own internal reference. Now the internal reference in this DSA815 is pretty good and for ordinary purposes uh, it, it's, it's quite adequate. But if you ever want to measure something precisely, you really want as good a reference as possible. Now I'm going to plug in the uh, power supply and notice that the alarm and the run light blinks and the alarm light is red. I'm going to pause the video now and I'll note the time and I'll come back. Now this unit hasn't been turned off for very long so I expect the oven to warm up pretty fast but uh, I'll uh, let you know how long that took when we get back in this video. Okay the GPS has already locked and it's only it's been less than a minute uh, but notice the alarm is still on indicating that the oven is not yet up to temperature. Okay, the, uh, as you can see, the lock is on and the alarm is off. The run key, uh, run uh, LED is blinking, indicating that the, uh, this uh, disciplined oscillator is locked to a GPS, enough satellites to, to, uh, to discipline the oscillator. It is running, in other words, the one pulse per second is, uh, is being generated and the uh, oven is up to temperature. Uh, this took less than three minutes. It had been unplugged for about 10 minutes when I, when I, I in order to move it, I had it in another location. Now it's in what I hope will be its final location. And now I'm going to uh, connect an amplifier to the uh, 10 megahertz out and run that to a number of other instruments, but I thought you might be interested in how long it takes. When I first turned this unit on, the very first time, the uh, it took uh, uh, right at an hour for the alarm light to go out. But that was right out of the shipping box, and it's uh, it probably was about as cold as it could get outside of winter a winter day. It was probably down in the 60 degree ambient range uh, when I when I first turned it on. So in coming weeks I will be experimenting with this. I'll be trying it out on a variety of other instruments. As I mentioned earlier, I plan to use it as the frequency reference for my DS4000 oscilloscope. Recently I've done a series on the MS-05000, also by Regal. Unfortunately that scope doesn't have a 10 megahertz uh, external uh, input. So there are some, some folks that have talked about perhaps modifying their scopes. To do that, uh, if, if you see anything of that sort, be, uh, just remember that when you do something like that, you do so at your own risk. I don't plan to go that direction. Instead, what I plan to do is use this with my most accurate oscilloscope, which is a Regal DSO 4000 that has a 500 megahertz bandwidth and an external 10 megahertz input, as well as I hope to be able to use it with the with a Siglent uh, spectral analyzer as well. But unfortunately, I've been having some trouble with the Siglent uh, not locking well to the uh, to this, uh, to this reference. Everything else seems to lock pretty well except the Siglent uh, spectrum analyzer, so I don't know what's wrong there. Uh, it could just be that it only works with a proprietary Siglent uh, reference or something of that sort. It's, uh, I just haven't looked into it. At any rate, I hope this has been of uh, some value to those of you that might be considering one of these devices. I will tell you that I bought this from Amazon. I paid less than 150, but more than 100. My recollection it was is it was about 120 something dollars with delivery. Uh, 
I bought it some time ago. It came in and it kind of sat for a little while. And now that I've finished the MSO 5000 series, I'm getting back to some of these things that have sort of piled up uh, in the background. So uh, stay tuned for some more videos, maybe on this, maybe on something else. But uh, hopefully they'll, uh, they'll give you some useful ideas, or if not, just some entertainment. As always, stay safe and try to have a nice day.